A tetrode is a vacuum tube having four active electrodes. There are several varieties of tetrode with screen grid tube, and the beam tetrode being the most common. The four electrodes in order from the center are, a thermionic cathode, first and second grids and a plate. In screen grid tubes and beam tetrodes, the first grid is the control grid and the second grid is the screen grid. In other tetrodes one of the grids is a control grid, while the other may have a variety of functions. During the period 1913 to 1927, three distinct types of tetrode valves appeared. All had a normal control grid whose function was to act as a primary control for current passing through the tube, but they differed according to the intended function of the other grid. In order of historical appearance these are the space charge grid tube, the bi-grid valve, and the screen grid tube. The last of these appeared in two distinct variants with different areas of application. The screen grid valve proper, which was used for medium frequency, small signal amplification, and the beam tetrode which appeared later, and was used for audio or radio frequency power amplification. The former was quickly superseded by the RF pentode, while the latter was initially developed as an alternative to the pentode as an audio power amplifying device. The beam tetrode was also developed as a high-power radio transmitting tube, and has remained in use until quite recently in both applications. How it works The tetrode functions in a similar way to the triode from which it was developed. A current through the heater or filament heats the cathode, which causes it to emit electrons by thermionic emission. A positive voltage is applied between the plate and cathode, causing a flow of electrons from the cathode to plate through the two grids. A varying voltage applied to the control grid can control this current, causing variations in the plate current. With a resistive or other load in the plate circuit, the varying current will result in a varying voltage at the plate. With proper biasing, this voltage will be an amplified version of the AC voltage applied to the control grid. Thus the tetrode can provide voltage gain. In the tetrode, the function of the other grid varies according to the type of tetrode. This is discussed below. Space Charge Grid Tube the space charge grid tube was the first type of tetrode to appear. In the course of his research into the action of the audione triode tube of Lida Forest, Irving Langmuir found that the action of the heated thermionic cathode was to create a space charge, or cloud of electrons, around the cathode. This cloud acted as a virtual cathode. With low applied anode voltage, many of the electrons in the space charge returned to the cathode, and did not contribute to the anode current. Only those at its outer limit would be affected by the electric field due to the anode, and would be accelerated towards it. However, if a grid bearing a low positive applied potential were inserted between the cathode and the control grid, the space charge could be made to extend further away from the cathode. This had two advantageous effects, both related to the influence of the electric fields of the other electrodes on the electrons of the space charge. Firstly, a significant increase in anode current could be achieved with lower anode voltage. The valve could be made to work well with lower applied anode voltage. Secondly, the transconductance of the tube was increased. The latter effect was particularly important since it increased the voltage gain available from the valve. Space charge valves remained useful devices throughout the valve era, and were used in applications such as car radios operating directly from a 12V supply, where only a low anode voltage was available. The same principle was applied to other types of multi-grid tubes such as pentodes. As an example, the Sylvania 12K5 is described as a tetrode designed for space charge operation. It is intended for service as a power amplifier driver where the potentials are obtained directly from a 12V automobile battery. The space charge grid was operated at plus 12V, the same as the anode supply voltage. Another important application of the space charge tetrode was as an electrometer tube for detecting and measuring extremely small currents. For example, the General Electric FP54 was described as a space charge grid tube.
Designed to have a very high input impedance and a very low grid current, it is designed particularly for amplification of direct currents smaller than about 10 carat minus 9 amperes, and has been found capable of measuring currents as small as 5 by 10 carat minus 18 amperes. It has a current amplification factor of 250,000, and operates with an anode voltage of 12V, and space charge grid voltage of plus 4V. The mechanism by which the space charge grid lowers control grid current in an electrometer tetrode is that it prevents positive ions originating in the cathode from reaching the control grid. Note that when a space charge grid is added to a triode, the first grid in the resulting tetrode is the space charge grid, and the second grid is the control grid. By grid valve, in the by grid type of tetrode, both grids are intended to carry electrical signals, so both are control grids. The first example to appear in Britain was the Marconi Osram FE1, which was designed by H.J. Round, and became available in 1920. The tube was intended to be used in a reflex circuit where the same valve performed the multiple functions of RF amplifier, AF amplifier, and diode detector. The RF signal was applied to one control grid, and the AF signal to the other. This type of tetrode was used in many imaginative ways in the period before the appearance of the screen grid valve revolutionized receiver design. One application is shown in the illustration. This is recognizable as an AM telephony transmitter in which the second grid and the anode form a power oscillator, and the first grid acts as a modulating electrode. The anode current in the valve, and hence the RF output amplitude, is modulated by the voltage on G1, which is derived from a carbon microphone. A tube of this type could also be used as a direct conversion CW receiver. Here the valve oscillates as a consequence of coupling between the first grid and the anode, while the second grid is coupled to the antenna. The AF beat frequency is audible in the headphones. The valve acts as a self-oscillating product detector. Another very similar application of the bi-grid valve was as a self-oscillating frequency mixer in early superhet receivers. One control grid carried the incoming RF signal, while the other was connected into an oscillator circuit which generated the local oscillation within the same valve. Since the anode current of the bi-grid valve was proportional both to the signal on the first grid, and also to the oscillator voltage on the second grid, the required multiplication of the two signals was achieved, and the intermediate frequency signal appeared in an appropriately tuned circuit connected to the anode. In all of the applications mentioned, the bi-grid tetrode acted as an analog multiplier which multiplied together the signals applied to the two grids. The supersonic heterodyne receiver principle was invented in France by Lucien Levy in 1917, though credit is usually also given to Edwin Armstrong. The original reason for the invention of the superhet was that, before the appearance of the screen grid valve, there was no type of valve which could give good gain at radio frequencies. So a technique was applied whereby the incoming RF signal was mixed with a locally generated oscillatory voltage so as to produce a beat frequency at the significantly lower frequency of about 30 kHz. This represented the incoming signal in all important respects, but at a lower frequency, at which it could be successfully amplified by a multi-stage tuned triode amplifier before being applied to the detector. This was a complicated technique. It went out of use when screen grid valves appeared which could act as satisfactory RF amplifiers capable of amplifying the incoming signal without lowering its frequency. Superhet receivers reappeared in the early 1930s when, because of the proliferation of transmitting stations, the greater selectivity became an important advantage. Almost all receivers operate on this principle today, albeit with a higher if frequency. Screen grid valve. In the screen grid class of tetrode, the main function of the second grid is to act as an electrostatic screen between the anode and the control grid in order to reduce the internal 
capacitance between control grid and anode. The first true screen grid valve, with a screen grid designed for this purpose, was patented by Hiroshi Ando in 1919, and the first practical versions were built by N. H. Williams and Albert Hull at General Electric and Bernard Telegen at Phillips in 1926. This type of tetrode was developed to correct efficiencies in the triode tube which became apparent when attempts were made to use triodes as small signal radio frequency amplifiers. In the triode, the control grid was next to the plate. Capacitance between these two electrodes caused instability and oscillation when both anode and grid were connected into tuned resonance circuits. As was the case in early radios, or in any application where the anode circuit presented an inductive reactive load to the valve, oscillation could only be avoided by using very small stage gain at frequencies above about 100 kHz, and at frequencies above 1 MHz. Triodes are virtually useless in tuned amplifiers in which both anode and grid circuits are tuned to the same frequency. A second advantage of the tetrode, which also arose from reduced anode grid capacitance, was that, when the anode voltage was in a certain range, changing its value had much less effect on the anode current than was the case with triodes. This corresponds to an increased anode slope resistance, and allowed much higher voltage gain by permitting a larger external load resistance. At the time of the introduction of screen grid valves a typical small triode used for small signal amplification had an anode slope resistance of 20 combs or less, and a grid anode capacitance of 1 to 5 picofarads while the corresponding figures for a typical screen grid valve were 1 moment 0.004 picofarads, in some cases much less capacitance. Screen grid valves were capable of greater voltage gain and higher frequency capability than triodes, and permitted the development of the first true RF amplifiers in the MF and HF frequency ranges in radio equipment. They were commonly used as the first stage of radio frequency amplification in domestic radio receivers in the period 1927 to 1930, after which they were superseded in this application by RF pentodes. Triodes were ill-suited to this type of application on account of their relatively high anode grid capacitance and low anode resistance. In normal operation the screen grid is connected to a positive DC voltage slightly less than the plate voltage, and bypassed to the cathode with the capacitor, so it was at AC ground. To take full advantage of the very low internal grid anode capacitance, the valve must be used in circuits in which the shielding between anode and grid is continued externally. In the case illustrated, the valve was intended to be inserted into a hole in an external, grounded, sheet metal shield aligned to correspond with the position of the internal screen grid. The input, or control grid circuit was on one side of the shield while the anode, or output circuit was on the other. In the case of the Osram music magnet, each entire stage of the two-stage RF amplifier, as well as the tuned detector stage, was enclosed in an individual large aluminium screening box. These boxes have been removed in the illustration, but the upturned edges of the bases of the boxes can be seen. Anode characteristic of screen grid valves The reason for the limited applicability of the screen grid valve, and its rapid replacement by the RF pentode was the peculiar anode characteristic of the former type of tube. In normal applications, the anode voltage was about 150 V, while that of the screen grid was about 60 V. As the screen grid is positive with respect to the cathode, it collects a certain fraction of the electrons which would otherwise pass from the grid region to the anode. This causes current to flow in the screen grid circuit. Usually, the screen current due to this cause is small, and of little interest. However, if the anode voltage should be below that of the screen, the screen grid can also collect secondary electrons ejected from the anode by the impact of the energetic primary electrons. Both effects tend to reduce the anode current. If the anode voltage is increased from a low value, 
With the screen grid at its normal operating voltage the anode current initially increases rapidly because more of those electrons which pass through the screen grid are collected by the anode rather than passing back to the screen grid. This part of the tetrode anode characteristic resembles the corresponding part of that of a triode or pentode. However, when the anode voltage is increased further, the electrons arriving at the anode have sufficient energy to cause copious secondary emission, and many of these secondary electrons will be captured by the screen, which is at a higher positive voltage than the anode. This causes the anode current to fall rather than increase when the anode voltage is increased. In some cases the anode current can actually become negative. This is possible since each primary electron may produce more than one secondary. Falling positive anode current accompanied by rising anode voltage gives the anode characteristic a region of negative slope, and this corresponds to a negative resistance which can cause instability in certain circuits. In a higher range of anode voltage, the anode voltage sufficiently exceeds that of the screen for an increasing proportion of the secondary electrons to be attracted back to the anode. So the anode current increases once more, and the slope of the anode characteristic becomes positive again. In a yet higher range of anode voltages, the anode current becomes substantially constant. Since all of the secondary electrons now return to the anode, and the main control of current through the tube is the voltage of the control grid, this is the normal operating mode of the tube. The anode characteristic of a screen grid valve is thus quite unlike that of a triode. It includes a range of anode voltages, where the anode voltage is less than that of the screen grid in which there is a distinctive negative resistance characteristic, sometimes called tetrode kink. This is usually undesirable, although it can be exploited as in the dynatron oscillator. The approximately constant current region of low slope at high anode voltage is also a distinctive characteristic of the tetrode. This is highly desirable, since it corresponds to a high source resistance in the anode circuit and greatly enhances the voltage gain which the device can produce. Early screen grid valves had amplification factors 10 times that of comparable small signal triodes. The high anode resistance in the normal operating range is a consequence of the electrostatic shielding action of the screen grid, since it prevents the electric field due to the anode from penetrating to the control grid region where it might otherwise influence the passage of electrons, increasing the electron current when the anode voltage is high, reducing it when low. In practice, the negative resistance kink of the anode characteristic limits the usefulness of the screen grid valve to applications where only small signals are amplified, so that the variations in anode voltage are also correspondingly small and the operating conditions never depart from the region of high positive impedance at large anode voltage. The secondary emission can be prevented from contributing to the screen current by adding a suppressor grid, making a pentode, or beam plate to make a beam tetrode, kinkless tetrode, which can be used in power amplifiers where the variations of anode voltage Due to the presence of a large signal voltage, are much greater. The anode characteristics of these tubes are very similar to pentodes. In both cases the anode current rises rapidly to an approximately constant value when the anode voltage rises to as little as a few tens of volts and the region of high positive anode resistance extends from this low value up to the maximum anode voltage which could be several hundred volts or more. The negative resistance operating region of the tetrode is exploited in the dynatron oscillator, which is an example of a negative resistance oscillator.